Hey everyone, Wayne here from Zenata Consulting. In this video, I'm going to cover eight tips when it comes to Zoho Campaign's email builder. This can include errors, little bugs that you might encounter, some best practices, and some like general guidelines on when using the Zoho Campaign's email builder. Before I jump in though, be sure to hit that like subscribe button and let's get started. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and use our newsletter template here. And if you aren't subscribed to our newsletter, I highly recommend it. It will keep you up to date with the latest Soho news. So you can go ahead and see I have last week's episode pulled up. And this is a perfect example because I'm going to be able to show you a lot of different features and bugs that you might encounter. So one common thing is, is I might clone this every week and I might, you know, want to build out various elements of it from a document and this is going to be like most people they're going to use a document to import stuff so i'll give you an example here i'm going to this first tip is about broken text so i just deleted something i have a word document pulled up on my other screen and i'm going to paste this in now if you notice i went ahead and paste this in and yet it broke over here if we look at this document here this should have been and i know i'm not using zoho writer forgive me but writer google it breaks on everything i've noticed and you'll notice that this text is now broken down here now if you know html you can go down here and find the error and the lines but you know navigating through zoho's html code in here and this code viewer it's it's just not great so it's still a, an easier way in your document to fix for this you can simply find the line where the error was let's go ahead and add one more bullet and then we'll copy this in. And now if we go ahead and delete this and start over, you can see it fixed the issue it was having. But now if I hit delete, it's going to delete the whole thing. So <laughs> there's definitely some quirks and some bugs. So if we paste this back in, let's go ahead and go here and hit the delete button twice. And now we went ahead and now we have a cleaner version of this. We can control all be it and then fix it that like so the next thing i want to point out is sometimes when you're doing bulleted where's my green like i have green everywhere else on my document why can't i see that well what you can do is you can copy the text and see how it's not pulling up and but they got you have the hex code here but now that i have it copied once where i didn't do anything i just looked at it it's now going to pull up and i can go ahead and quickly adjust the color to match the others tip number three is sometimes when you have things highlighted, you know, and I want to go ahead and adjust the colors and I'll move it back. Well, now it's not highlighted anymore, but why is that? But I can still come over here and do underline and bold, even though when I was adjusting the color, you know, and I click out of it, it wasn't showing that it was highlighted. So just because you adjust the color, just know that it's still highlighted and you can make changes to your file. Tip number four, quick one. So down here, perfect example, we've got some links. We'll change this to 2032. And I'm going to, from my document, just copy and paste this question with the hyperlink over it. So now you can see it's underlined and I want to change it to green and I want to underscore it. But when I underscore it, it's broken and it's not letting me do so. If this ever happens to you when you're building something out, rather than having to delete it all and start over and figure out where the bug is, if you simply use the add link, reapply the link, and hit underscore then, it will go ahead and remove the underscore. One thing I want to point out, it's two things around your image. So let's say you use a banner like this for your header of your newsletter, or your promotion, whatever you're sending out. You'd simply go over here, we'd grab an image, we would drop it in. And then we'd go ahead and let's go ahead and change this image to the Silholix banner here. If you'll notice here, there's no alternate text and sometimes it's going to pre-populate the alternate text with the image name. So if we click here for one that's already been populated, I'll maybe down here. Here we go. So it's just got alternate text of the image name. So if I were to save this file right now and come back to it, it would just pre-populate text like that. The issue is, is sometimes when you put a header at the very top, this is going to show up in the email before the actual text down here. 
So if you want them to see something other than a very long URL link, you need to come in here and go ahead and change, you know, the alternate text. So when they open the email, they see the messaging you want to see and not just some hyperlink for an image. Another tip I want to point out is sometimes when you go ahead and upload an image, I'm going to go ahead and upload from my computer. I have the Zoholics join us here, but if I pull up the Zoholics link right here and the join us and I hit open, it's not going to pull in because it has a special character. So at least it's giving you a warning now. In the past, it just wouldn't open. But keep in mind, you cannot have any special characters on your saved files. It does auto convert spaces now. So it will pre-populate them with underscores to make up for those spaces. Let's say you're going to use something in a lot of your different banners or your different content, and you're not always just cloning one, you're starting one from scratch oftentimes. Use this bookmark feature. This bookmark up here is a great tool. Like for example, you know, we've got our footer down here and let's say it's customized just for our newsletter. There's nothing special about it, but I've updated the text. You know, maybe I just want to drop one in and now I can quickly drop in this newsletter here. And I can do so by simply hitting the bookmark. But let's say I have promotions. So let's say promotions. I can now quickly save this, make it a bookmark, and we'll call it footer promotions. Although for naming conventions sake, let's go ahead and make it the same as the other. So now we have our promotions footer. So now I can quickly choose, you know, which type of content is this going to be? I can drag a bookmark and have a pre-populated section ready to go to my design likings. All right, this next tip is going to cover padding. So padding is something that's often overlooked, but I really recommend coming up with some padding that best fits your newsletter, or your content. Sometimes aligning with some images that you might have or other boxes. You know, so since ours are all flushed with banners and it's just text, let's go ahead and add some padding that, you know, brings this up a little. So generally I recommend 1515, gives it some nice padding or even 2525. So it's going to give enough padding from the left to the right to really kind of make it stand out. Now, if you look here though, we can see it kind of bugged out. It stayed with 15. So let's just come back to there and really click in and then make sure we click done so it saves properly. And then we can go through and adjust, you know, all of the other content pieces. So keep in mind though, that if it's a bulleted list, it's going to stick out a little bit more because bullets are already padded. So if you wanted it to be more flush, maybe we want to adjust this to 1515 or even 10, 10 to kind of be more in line with this other content. So in this case, I actually think 5.5 five would probably be the closest. And we come here, we can see it's populated. And then the same goes with the rest. So you, since it's a bulleted list, make this 5.5. Five, and then everything else, you know, 15.15, 15, 25, 25, whatever you see fit. Kind of a little bonus one I wanted to point out too is a lot of these things are going to be opened on mobile devices. This is something I see often um, when using the column feature, so let's say we wanted to use the column here with two text boxes. And let's say we also wanted to drop in two images. What I often see sometimes is if we go here and we go ahead and add a couple images to the content. What I've done here is I now have two boxes and I'll just delete this. I now have two boxes with two content. Let's say this is a promotion for item A and item B. And below I have, you know, item B information and item A information. So we're gonna dial this in, we're gonna add a couple images and it looks great and all, but when I open it on a mobile device, it's actually going to show up as image A on top of image B, and then item information A text on top of item information B text. So that's not ideal if you're trying to, you know, that's not what you want, you want it to look like this. So keep in mind when you're doing columns to keep the images and text that you want stacked on top of each other, 
to show up within the same column itself. So if I went ahead, as you can see here, I've got one column here, but now this is now associated with this column here, as we can see. So if I were to delete this, and I were to come back here, now if I were to send this on a mobile device, you would see image one on top of some text and then image two below this text here, rather than two images stacked on top of each other with the text stacked on top of each other. Those are some quick tips. I hope you found them useful. Uh, if there are any bugs that you're encountering or you know you need some help with, I would love to you know know what they are and I can make additional videos and if you wanna share them in the comments below. Uh, also, if you haven't yet, be sure to like and subscribe and check out our newsletter at zanata.com forward slash newsletter. Until next time, have a great one.